5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Monday, April 19, 2021. Fox report. Putin critic Navalny transferred to prison hospital, officials concerned he could die at any minute. Russia's penitentiary service said Monday that it was transferring ailing dissident Alexei Navalny, who is on the 20th day of a hunger strike, to a prison hospital, amid grave fears for his health. The decision comes a day after the U.S. threatened the Kremlin with consequences if President Vladimir Putin's major domestic opponent dies behind bars, according to Agence France Press. Navalny's private doctors warned during the weekend that he could die at any minute. CNN report. European Super League. 12 European football teams to form breakaway competition throwing elite game into turmoil. 12 of Europe's top soccer clubs have announced plans to form a so-called European Super League, in a move that looks set to rock the foundations of the sport's top competitions, in a joint announcement Sunday. Six English clubs, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester United, and Tottenham Hotspur, alongside three teams from Italy, AC Milan, Inter Milan and Juventus, and three from Spain, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona and Real Madrid, laid out plans to form a breakaway competition. Fox report. Illinois seven-year-old with life-threatening heart condition becomes SWAT officer for a day. The Chicago Police Department on Sunday partnered with the Illinois Make-A-Wish Foundation to help one seven-year-old become a SWAT officer. Ibrahim from Worth, Illinois, has a life-threatening heart condition, and his dream was to become a police officer for a day to catch a luxury car thief. According to the CPD's Twitter page, Chicago police made Ibrahim an honorary CPD SWAT officer to make his dream come true, the department tweeted, along with photos of him on duty. Fox Report. Father-daughter duo create YouTube channel empowering children with special needs. Four years ago, Miguel Figueroa tried to push his now 13-year-old daughter, Ileana, to start her own YouTube channel, similar to the one she adored so much. Her response left him at a loss for words. She said she couldn't do it because she had autism, Miguel Figueroa told Fox News. As a parent, it kind of broke my heart because it was the last thing I was expecting her to say. Knowing this, he transformed his man cave into what would become the Toy Quest 101, a YouTube channel dedicated to reviewing pop culture while also empowering other children like Ileana Figueroa to achieve their goals despite what obstacles they may face. CNN report. Four things to ask before you hire a financial advisor. Financial advisors aren't just for the super wealthy. Whatever your money concerns or goals may be, there are financial advisors that can fit your needs and budget. While there's always the option to handle your money on your own, hiring a professional can help you manage your money and reach your financial goals. An advisor can provide you with clarity on where you are today, where you want to be in the future and how to bridge the space between, said Andy Mardik a certified financial planner, and founder and president of VivFi Planning. Al Jazeera report. Greta Thunberg joins fight for coronavirus vaccine equity. Teenage climate activist Greta Thunberg has urged governments, vaccine developers and the world to step up their game to fight vaccine inequity after the richest countries snatched up most COVID-19 vaccine doses and those in poorer nations have gone lacking. Her comments on Monday came as the World Health Organization announced 5.2 million new confirmed virus cases during the latest week, the largest weekly count yet, according to the UN Health Agency. Deutsche Well Report. Germany. Violence against men. Helpline got 1,800 calls in one year. Germany is preparing a social media campaign to further promote its violence against men. Helpline. Authorities said on Monday. The first support service of its kind in the country, the Violence Against Men helpline was launched jointly a year ago by the German states of Bavaria and North Rhine-Westphalia, NRW, with the number of nationwide contacts rising steadily over the course of the project. The organizers are now getting help from other federal states. Deutsche Well Report. Germany says Myanmar sanctions will force junta to negotiate. The EU hopes new sanctions against Myanmar will force the country's ruling military junta to the negotiating table, German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas said on Monday. 
Moss was speaking after a virtual meeting of his EU counterparts in which the bloc decided to slap new measures on the Southeast Asian nation. They affected 10 officials and two companies linked to the crackdown that has seen more than 700 people lose their lives. Al Jazeera report. U.S. Supreme Court questions permanent residency for some migrants. U.S. Supreme Court justices on Monday appeared reluctant to let people who have been allowed to stay in the United States on humanitarian grounds apply to become permanent residents if they entered the country illegally. The justices heard arguments in an appeal by a married couple from El Salvador who were granted so-called temporary protected status of a lower court ruling that barred their applications for permanent residency, also known as a green card, because of their unlawful entry. CNN report. Chinese feminists are being silenced by nationalist trolls. Some are fighting back. The torrent of hate messages filling Liang Xiaowen's inbox stopped as suddenly as it had started. For a week, the 29-year-old Chinese feminist was subject to incessant chauvinist and misogynist attacks on Weibo, one of China's most popular social media sites. She was called a traitor and a xenocentric bitch. Some users discussed how to find her parents' home address. Then, without any warning, Liang's account was removed by Weibo. BBC report. Australian sex education campaign branded, concerning, by activists. The online program uses metaphors such as eating tacos and smearing milkshake on someone's face to depict disrespect and abuse. Equality activists have described the videos as bizarre and concerning. The government has defended the campaign, which it said was created with the help of experts. These materials will provide additional support to better educate young Australians on these issues and have been designed to complement programs already being offered by states and territories, Education Minister Alan Tudge said when announcing the campaign last week. Deutsche Well report. German governing coalition agrees to shorter curfew. Germany's ruling parties have moved toward finalizing federal coronavirus legislation by agreeing to change curfew rules on Monday. The changes are part of the so-called emergency break agreed to between federal, state and local officials last week. The federal emergency break dictates particular steps be taken automatically as soon as infection rates in a given district exceed infection benchmarks. CNN report. LinkedIn billionaire. Cut off funding for politicians who limit voting rights. A growing number of CEOs are speaking out on voting rights. LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman is urging business leaders to back up their verbal support with concrete action that will send a message to politicians. Protecting voter rights and making voting more accessible is both pro-business, and more importantly, pro-American, Hoffman told CNN Business in an email. The billionaire investor hopes companies will withhold economic support from politicians who seek to limit the right of any American citizen to vote. BBC Report why Russia's GRU military intelligence service is so feared. In communist times, the KGB became a byword in the West for Soviet spooks, whether they were infiltrating corridors of power abroad or suppressing dissidents at home. But few people ever heard of the GRU, an acronym pronounced like the English word, GRU. Yet the military intelligence service, GRU stands for Main Intelligence Directorate, outlasted the KGB when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991 and appears to be flourishing today. BBC Report. Cuba Leadership. Diaz-Canel named Communist Party Chief. Mr. Diaz-Canel, who in 2018 succeeded Mr. Castro as Cuba's president, had been widely tipped for the arguably more influential post of party leader. The transition means that the island will be governed by someone other than Fidel or Raul Castro for the first time since the Cuban Revolution in 1959. Mr. Diaz-Canel is seen as loyal to the Castros and their economic model. Speaking on Friday, when Mr. Diaz-Canel had not been officially named yet as first secretary, Raul Castro said that he would hand over the leadership to a younger generation, full of passion and anti-imperialist spirit. Al Jazeera Report World on the verge of climate crisis, abyss, warns UN. Time is fast running out to tackle the climate crisis, a United Nations report has warned. With the COVID-19 pandemic having failed to put the brakes on relentless climate change. In a double blow to millions hit by the extreme climate events, lockdown restrictions linked to the global coronavirus pandemic also delayed crucial assistance in some regions. 
said the report by the UN's World Meteorological Organization, WMO. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell. Thank you.